uh, okay i know this is just the session before the lunch so just bear with me for next 20 minutes okay after this we will eat together okay so just be with me for next 20 minutes right so please be a little bit energetic right because you have came a long way here i am i came from india just to speak uh, on this topic so let's be a little bit more energetic right Woo! okay perfect so the topic is expanding your kubernetes arsenal blah 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 okay so basically it's all about adding the tools that i learned from my experience in my kubernetes production grade workload uh, experience right so i will be telling you the tools that we are using currently as a company okay my name is prerit munjal and i will be giving you my intro first who am i so this is me i am a part time certificate collector so i have around 14 certifications in azure eight in google cloud two in linux foundation that is ck and cks okay so and full time i work as a team lead at wiz labs in cloud engineering department uh, and uh, i am solely responsible for all the google cloud things happening there next thing is uh, i have a youtube channel where i teach people so the name is tech with prerit and uh, yeah i just graduated so uh, i just graduated from my bachelor's degree this year and uh, we just hit uh, 10000 subscriber uh, subscribers on my youtube channel so clap <laughs> so uh, i just have 10 videos where i post about uh, the kubernetes stuff okay but uh, if you want to learn about kubernetes just do watch the video then subscribe to it okay and uh, yeah if you want to connect with me on linkedin youtube or ig you can scan the code okay so without a further ado let's start the session okay so first thing is why this session okay what's the need of this session we have linux land uh, the cncf landscape right there are plenty of tools under that umbrella right so what's the exact need of this session the need is the angry cat okay so often people are so confused that why which tool do we really need it right and uh, still uh, like i work at a startup okay wizlabs is a startup so we are not an end user company so we consume the linux foundation or cncf products we somehow use it in our own production environment and then some do some polishing and give it to the end user okay this is our main goal so uh, as a startup we also thought that we are just a small company okay we don't need all these observability monitoring tracing profiling there is not an actual need of these tools right and most of the startups nearly 90% of the startups think the same because they think that okay they will incur more cost but uh, and the next topic uh, next reason of this session is uh, even as a students okay i know most of you are students you uh, you are very confused in picking the right tools right to which pick uh, to pick which right tools and to integrate with your kubernetes environment so that you can really uh, without having the experience of an internship you can really explore about kubernetes in depth okay so let's start with the topic first thing is image security okay i know uh, i should have started with the sdlc cycle but image is something that under the hood everything is every every process is using right so for image security uh, like uh, we had our sponsors the tool is aqua uh, the company is aqua and the tool is trivi so trivi the advantage of using trivi is that it is very lightweight okay you don't need to add a lot of code into it okay it will you just have to run a simple command just one line up and it will return you the level of cves in that particular image what are cvs basically these are some sort of hacks you can say okay some vulnerabilities that some people have found out and they have reported to the companies okay there is a particular standard for that and they have reported to them on top of that trivi has collected all the cvs in a database okay and then it when we run the command it matches the image okay if that layer has that cv or not if it has then it will return something like this okay 
So here you can see we ran Trivi, then uh, the image uh, name, and then it returned something like critical medium high. Okay. It gives us parameter, for example, because it may happen that they have multiple layers, right? Multiple layers may have multiple CVEs exposed. So it gives us some uh, parameters as well through which we can ignore the medium and high. Okay, we can just consume, we can just see the critical things. Okay, so Trivi is very lightweight. Okay, you just need to install it through a binary, that's it. And then, uh, because we are moving the security left, right? Uh, shifting security to the left means we are adding security to each and every step instead of adding security to the very end. Okay, just like we did it before, we in the previous style of architectures, we introduced, uh, we used to add security in the very last step where the QA will test everything and then the uh, uh, product will shift to the production. But now these days we are shifting security to each and every step. For building image, the developer will test the image so that we can easily catch the uh, security issues at the very initial stages, okay? So yeah, Trivi is one of the most important tools that we are using in the production right now and it's very lightweight. Okay, the next thing is, apart from security, because this talk will be all about my experience in production, the things that are evolving that I have seen like eBPFs, okay, how eBPF is evolving and how we can leverage eBPF in our production systems. Now, next thing is monitoring and observability, okay. So, first thing is, you need to ask with your teammates or your management people that, what are we looking for? Okay, because for, for example, for a banking application, observability will be different. It will be like asset properties, right? The database shouldn't be like, there shouldn't be different entries in the database. For a gaming application, the, uh, the monitoring would be that number of latency or number of bytes or P99, how much packets are being dropped. Similarly, for an ed tech like us, it will be the retention period, okay? We want the user to be on our platform at the very time, okay? So observability and monitoring will be different for different use cases. Now, for different even use cases, we have different criteria, okay? We can um, monitor infrastructure. In infrastructure, what we can say is the Kubernetes cluster, okay? Or the persistent disk. In persistent disk, we can have IOPS, we can have scalability, we have multiple options, okay? In second stage is application, okay? The application deployed on infrastructure, should be monitored and in every case we monitor the application. So by application, it can be latency, it can be throughput, it can be uh, multiple things and in infra we can have CPU utilization, memory consumption, multiple things, okay? Totally based on your criteria. Now, how to define the metric that we will discuss later on, okay? Uh, and uh, the next step is CICD, obviously we will, in Current architectures, we are yet adding observability to CI-CD. We were not observing the CI-CD long before in our architecture, okay? We are adding observability to our CI-CD pipelines. For example, uh, how to scale the CI system using Argo CD, okay? So we are currently building a POC on it, and uh, yeah. So we are observing CI-CD as well, and then performance of the application, that is APM, application performance monitoring, uh, how to do that and uh, the next thing is cost, okay? So these things we will be discussing now on. So right now this is our current tech stack and it consists of Prometheus, Grafana and Tracy. So what is Prometheus? Uh, for every company I think 95% of the companies are using Prometheus and Grafana because they are battle tested, okay? So you just need to collect the metrics and Grafana will catch it and visualize it, that's it. That there's, uh, because what are metrics? Metrics are nothing, just they are time series entries, okay? So it is a database consisting of time series things and then we will visualize it. It is nothing more than that. And this uh, driving the meaning out of this thing, uh, the, these metrics, we use Grafana, okay? Uh, next thing is Tracy, okay? So why we are uh, using Tracy? Because in some systems or in our previous containers, I will tell you, okay, let me show you uh, our in-house tool, okay? Why we are using these tools. So this is our in-house tool that took us around four uh, months to build. Three engineers were consumed totally into building this product. And it is just a deletion tool, okay? So uh, let me log in first. And... Uh,
So uh, it took us four months to build this particular tool, and uh, yeah, we uh, later down the line we realized that there is already a solution for this. Okay, there is there was no need for us to develop this particular tool. So we just wasted our four months. So tools like Open Cost or Cube Cost are already there, right? So where where was I? Uh, So this is the tool. Uh, behind the hood, it is using Google Cloud APIs, right? And let me log in first. Okay. So uh, this will take time because uh, still it's not battle tested and it is calling 3000 APIs in the backend at the very first instance. And basically it, it's just fetching the uh, metrics and visualizing it. So instead of using uh, Grafana and Prometheus, we uh, built this thing. And at that time, APIs were not uh, available from the Google Cloud uh, point of view because our entire infrastructure is on Google Cloud. So uh, let it load because 3,000 3, API calls are being made in the backend. So we will come back soon, okay? Uh, and meanwhile, let's start this thing. Okay, so Tracy, why we are using Tracy? So uh, in previous instances, we were hit by a dollar, $1 million crypto mining attack on our systems, okay? It was an overnight attack. So one crypto miner came, he stole the service account keys, and we were costed around $1 million in the, on the weekend itself. So that was a very uh, learning curve for me as well because I was an intern back then. So we used uh, tools like Tracy and Terraform to automate the things and also cache the system calls. So Tracy is an eBPF based tool. What is eBPF? Uh, it's just think of it as a re real time uh, thing, okay? It will catch everything at real time. Basically from the Linux kernel or from the kernel space, it will it will just observe the things that are happening. It, it will just observe the system calls that user space is using or user space is calling the uh, maybe syslog or anything, anything. So uh, it will just observe what user space is calling and it will inform you in the right time, okay, in the real time. So if we had Tracy back then, then we could have saved our $1 million, okay. Anyway, they were uh, uh, like reimbursed by Google itself. But uh, yeah, we faced this issue, okay. So Tracy would have helped us in that containerized thing. Now, uh, yeah, this is how Prometheus and Grafana would look like, okay. Uh, just simple uh, entries and you can easily integrate in your company, in your project, no matter how small or big it is. Yeah, Prometheus will face uh, issues sometimes when you are looking for 100% accuracy. Okay, for example, in banking applications, we won't suggest to use Prometheus. Uh, use something more battle tested because uh, Prometheus is not for 100% accuracy, according to the documentation itself. Okay. Yeah, and this is the Tracy, okay? So what it does is, uh, you have just you just have to type the command and it will show you what calls are being made, okay? Similarly, you can uh, just scan for some vulnerability, okay? If you, if, you, if you think that this system call shouldn't be made, so you can uh, scan that as well. So yeah, next thing is monitoring. Uh, this is the new invention or new, a uh, gift from the isovalent team, okay? This is Tetragon. Tetragon is eBPF based real, uh, real time, like it provides the security in, in, in very broad perspective, okay? It makes sure that you, your environment is running with the compliance. So Tetragon, uh, it uh, works similar to like Tracy worked like eBPF based, but uh, it's uh, uses much more, okay? So it will work uh, at eBBF level for security and to make sure that things are being made. Since uh, like uh, we have heard uh, from the Tetragon team from past only three, four months that they are launching this thing. So it's still under development. We have not used it. We are trying to communicate with them so that we can use this product. Okay, it's still in the development phase, but this is a new invention. 
that how EBPF can be leveraged into the security perspective, that how we can really use the EBPF in security, observability, and monitoring things. So yeah, Tetragon is something good. Next thing, uh, yeah, Celium is also like same company, Isovalent. So Celium uh, recently, one year back, developed uh, ambient service mesh, okay? Previously, we used to have sidecar patterns. Similarly, uh, this ambient mesh, what it will do is, it will run on sidecar-less patterns. We are consuming this ambient mesh in our current architecture. Unfortunately, I can't show you the code, but it is a cool way, okay? By uh, using the ambient mesh, we have, uh, we have analyzed that we have reduced 60% of our maintenance time, of our time spent on like toil time, okay? Just repetitive work, uh, managing the things. And also we have uh, seen 30% cost reduction in this case, because anyway, when you run a sidecar pattern, there will be more latency, okay? You will be incurred more cost. And specifically, if your architecture is cloud-based, then uh, cost will be huge, okay? So, uh, yeah, Celium. The next thing is this open cost is a tool that we uh, that made us regret uh, that why we built that tool for four months. Okay, open cost is very great tool that we could have used. Okay, so it is vendor neutral. First of all, no matter if it's AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, you can use open cost in any scenario. Next thing is it sends real time cost and alerts. We uh, basically, if you have used AWS or Google Cloud, uh, specifically Google Cloud, so the cost comes after some time, okay? After five hours, after six hours, after three, four hours, based on their observations, okay? But open cost sends the uh, alerts in real time, okay? So for example, at 5, 5 a.m., one million crypto mining attack happened, okay? It was in the process. Google Cloud will send us the email, at 10 a.m., okay, after five years, uh, after five hours or 5.30, five hour, 30 minutes. But open cost will send us the notification in real time, okay? And basically for cloud as well, uh, Google, because our infrastructure is on Google Cloud, so the alerting system is not great, okay? You just receive a notification that this much bill is consumed. No. Uh, no, like which resource, uh, due to which resource it is being there, okay? So not in-depth observations regarding it, but open cost, uh, in open cost, you can customize it, and it's based on OPA, okay? Uh, you can write uh, rego files and you can customize anything, okay? So you can try this tool as well. We are uh, currently replacing this in-house tool with open cost, and uh, yeah, so debugging and troubleshooting. So uh there is not a there are not many tools for troubleshooting okay because you are not an engineer if you can't troubleshoot things okay because 60% of our time is spent on troubleshooting so there's no there are not many tools for troubleshooting because everyone will face different issues right but one tool that can help you is kubectl okay <laughs> run logs run describe okay and integrate it with lens okay lens everybody in production uses so Lens is just a graphical interface. It, it shows you how many replica sets you have, ingress you have, basically an overview. Because in cloud environments, uh, because most of the architectures are cloud environments, you don't have that, uh, what we say, uh, like uh, UI platform to just see the things, okay? Uh, using Lens, you can use Kube, uh, Kubernetes dashboard or QBNB, anything like that to visualize the things, okay? Uh, yeah, next thing that we are currently exploring is AIOps. Uh, have you heard of AIOps, anyone, before? Okay, so there is a company called, uh, there's a tool called Numalogic. It was developed by Intuit, right? And what they do is they have already trained their model on some a ML thing, okay? I still don't know what they have done, but it sends you uh, uh, like real time, uh, Failure, if there is some failure, they will send you everything, okay? Uh, like this failure is happening or uh, like uh, this node is down or this pod is down. So they have developed something, Intuit guys, and uh, this is the uh, tool Numalogic. You can definitely try it out for AI ops and it is for forecasting as well. But right now uh, we, are, we, we are just exploring the use case, okay? Uh, yeah, next thing is, uh, Security and compliance, uh, these tools we are currently using, as I told you that 
the crypto mining attack happened and we wrote Terraform scripts. Terraform scripts uh, were scanned using Terrascan, okay? Uh, Terrascan is just a command, uh, just a tool. Uh, this is the output, okay? So uh, it will show you like which, uh, what is the violation and all that thing. So we use Terrascan for that. And next tool was Cubescape, okay? Cubescape, like I used in my local, but we never used it in production. So it is just a security platform to integrate with IDE and your cloud environment, on-prem, everything. But Cubescape is just an option for you, not for production. And the next thing was Cubebench. Cubebench is just a tool by, again, Equa, the sponsors. And uh, it is not a sponsored talk. We actually used it. Okay, so it will just scan your entire Kubernetes cluster, though in Google Cloud, uh, or in any cloud vendor, security is their concern of the infrastructure. We don't have any say for the security, but if you are using on-prem or you are using some other cloud vendors or other vendors, you can definitely try Kubebench. It, it will be helpful in your uh, CKS certification as well. So it will just return all the, like, all the things that Kubebench, uh, things that they shouldn't be there, okay? For example, some argument, uh, profiling should be false or profiling should be true. So it will return you all those things with the specific solution, okay? The solution, the problem, where the problem lies in master node, control plane, ETCD, anything, okay? And uh, yeah, Terrascan has 500 plus policies through which it will compare your code and reflect back. Yeah, so this is how Kubescape work. But Kubescape, again, uh, I won't recommend because we haven't used it in production. Next thing are Falco and uh, OPA. Almost everybody uses Falco. Okay, Falco is just an auditing tool. So you uh, like you can write custom uh, to, uh, custom things in Rego and uh, uh, basically, not in Rego, but uh, uh, you can uh, collect the logs, you can do anything, you can... Uh, uh, customize the logs, you can make sure that only you are collecting logs for specified things. So you can use Falco for that. And OPA, again, uh, it is uh, OPA Gatekeeper, if you have heard. How many of you have heard of OPA Gatekeeper? Okay, it, it, it is an open policy agent. Again, we are using it for security, but not at that great because our entire infrastructure is cloud-based. We get the logs from cloud monitoring, cloud logging, so we don't need any other compliance or, or compliance or security tool or monitoring tool for that. Okay, but you can definitely try OPA and Falco. And uh, yeah, next thing we used previously was Notary. Okay, Notary is for signing your artifacts. Okay, but now we are currently using Artifact Registry in our production, which is a Google Cloud product, and uh, basically. Uh, things are pretty seamless in Artifact Registry because our infra is in Google Cloud. But you can definitely try Notary. It is for signing your artifacts. It is for making sure that your artifacts are valid, uh, right? But uh, I would uh, recommend that if your platform or infrastructure is cloud specific, there's no need to try external, uh, external tools, okay? Yeah, uh, the next tools are Kepler and Keda that uh, I think Katie mentioned in the keynote section. So uh, I will just give an overview. So Kepler stands for Kubernetes Efficient Power Level uh, Exporter. So it will just uh, uh, basically, it's just one step closer to sustainability and it gives you pod level consumption, okay? So if you have uh, like heard the keynote section, I, I think she explained it very brilliantly. And it's a CNCF uh, sandbox project and it uses eBPF under the hood. Again, just uh, look at how eBPF is changing the things, okay? Observability, monitoring, resource management, everything is being governed by eBPF now. So, uh, yeah, uh, so this is Kepler. Next thing is Keda. Keda is event-driven architecture. So, event-driven auto-scaling. So, for example, uh, if how many of you have heard of HP and VPA? Horizontal product is killing, yeah. So it uh, work alongside HPA and uh, uh, so it eases out your auto scaling process. So uh, you can definitely try out Keda. And uh, I think it was again covered in the keynote section. Yeah, some brownies. So we are currently using Nova. So Nova is a tool which updates you about the Helm chart that this chart is deprecated. 
okay this chart has some container issues or container releases issues so first output is of the nova okay and uh, second is uh, the pluto pluto uh, basically we don't use pluto as of now very extensively because uh, so whenever a kubernetes version is rolled out api previous api versions are deprecated and uh, so a long conversation cut short that uh, you need to update the API versions, okay? And Pluto identifies that this API version is deprecated. You can definitely try it out, but again, if it's cloud agnostic, uh, or if it's cloud specific, then everything is being take, taken care of by the cloud vendor. Okay, for uh, YAML management, uh, we use Kubelinter, okay? Kubelinter, you can obviously uh, try it. It's very easy, and uh, uh, so what it does is, uh, you just have to run the command kubelint lint and the yaml file or uh, any other uh, helm chart it will identify misconfigurations and it will return you the output so again uh, if you are an experienced yaml developer so you won't be needing this but if you are a devops and cloud engineer you will be needing kubelinter okay uh, yeah, you even definitely try, uh, try out Argo world, okay, workflows, uh, CD events and uh, rollouts. But as of now, we are not using Argo CD in our production. Yeah, GitOps is good. GitOps is brilliant. You have single source of truth, but we don't need it right away. But you can obviously try out uh, Argo CD as well. Uh, right now, we are not consuming and we are not thinking to uh, for a single source of truth. Okay, because our architecture is designed in such a way. But you can obviously uh, go for workflow, CD, and events is something very interesting that we are hoping to get into. But yeah, you can try out Argo. Yeah, and some unsung heroes, uh, sealed container, uh, sealed secrets, okay, as discussed in the previous talk. So sealed secrets are nothing, so basically in secrets in Kubernetes are not encrypted, okay, they are just, uh, encoded okay encoded is not equal to encrypted so uh, sealed secrets were uh, developed by bitnami and uh, nearly everybody is using sealed secrets and uh, some of you might be asking that if it it was that easy then why kubernetes itself is not encrypting the secrets right that i think you need to ask from the contributors or from the maintainers Right. And next thing is Carta containers. Carta containers we are using for isolated hardware. We are just using for two containers. That is our internal, uh, like internal use case only. But Carta containers you can try for hardware isolation. Okay. You just have to define runtime class and uh, just run it. Okay. Just mention the uh, Gvisor or anything else and run Carta containers. Uh, yeah. Uh, the next thing we are currently building is uh, using the backstage. Okay. Uh, so backstage is a platform is in platform to build tools okay or a platform to build platforms so for example we have an intern onboarding uh, our team and uh, we need all the documents uh, maybe previous architecture architecture diagrams recordings uh, the access to the tools the observability the application the total number of resources so uh, building something with backstage so uh, it will create an ecosystem, okay? It will reduce the toil, toil is the amount of repetitive work. So you can definitely try out backstage and build us, build an ecosystem out of your company so that uh, you guys can like easily mix up or the newcomer or the outgoing people can easily understand your architecture and manage track and docu see the documentation, okay? Uh, Chaos engineering, yeah, we sometimes do on our platform. So we just use one tool named as Chaos Cube. So what it will do is it will delete a pod randomly at random pod, no relation with uh, any algorithm. It will just delete your pod randomly. And uh, we just try to, like, it's not type of a load test or stress test, but just an uh, like out of the blue test. So you can definitely try your reliability, your reliability of engineering or reliability of infrastructure using Chaos Cube. And uh, is that it? Uh, so uh, out of 173 projects of CNCF, uh, can I just use these 10 tools? Uh, the answer is no. 
uh, <laughs> answer is no because uh, like uh, the need will differ okay the need for your architecture and need for our architecture differs so there is not a simple law that you should be using these tools okay there is no need and also these tools are more than enough okay I don't know if somebody is using these many tools in uh, real time or maybe a mid-scale company will be using these tools because more tools means more headache okay and after some time these uh, some of the tools go into end uh, if you scale your data will scale you have to go to enterprise edition and they will charge you a lot more like Datadog because uh, uh, we were thinking to go for Datadog but uh, after hearing the experiences of the companies we heard that they are costing huge okay so yeah just take the decision because right now what i can see is uh, uh, at very less scale it's easy to choose any tool right but when you scale when you go up in the numbers uh, these tools can trouble you okay so just pick the tools uh, uh, very constructively and also kubernetes have a lot of good tools uh, good uh, uh, objects like network policy okay Network policy is a great object that can, that you can apply and make sure that traffic is is in the boundary. So there is no need for external network policy. Okay. Similarly, it's namespaces. Okay. Namespaces is the most underrated thing that uh, developers use for multi-tenancy. Okay. Multi uh, namespaces I think were built for only multi-tenancy. It's very good if you can. Uh, it's a very good uh, thing if you can really apply and. Uh, apply it constructively in your architecture yeah that's it uh, do you, uh, i would be happy to take questions any questions yeah okay so what is the difference between cube okay so uh, trivi Cubescape and Trivi. Okay, Trivi is for scanning the CVEs in our images. Okay, whereas let me go back to the slide. Okay, so. Uh, Trivi was for the scanning the images, right? But Cubescape is a one-stop platform for your, like, if you want to do it with CI, CD, if you want to add security to your uh, IDEs, okay, as a plugin. So it is just a one-stop tool, but Trivi is just for scanning the images, okay? Scanning JSONs or scanning any stored image or local image. Thank you. Hey, hi. Hi. Um, so you spoke about a lot of these tools. How do you uh, evaluate which tool is good for your use case? Okay, nice question. So uh, the first thing that we look for is, uh, are there any use case or case studies present there? Okay. So we read the case studies that, okay, this was the problem faced by them. Uh, do we have the similar interest or do we have the similar architecture? Next thing is we build a POC for one or two weeks. And uh, yeah, out of like first thing is we see the GitHub stars because we can't just pick any 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 tool and apply our inf it on our infrastructure. So we see the repo, we see the code, and then we we just consume the uh, tool in our infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Okay, yeah. Okay, still loading. <laughs> Let's see the logs. Okay. Because uh, this entire application is containerized, okay. Uh, the container image is around 1 GB, I guess. So it's heavy. Okay. Okay, so we can see that. Uh, memory utilization is 99% at one point. CPU utilization as, it as nine, no, it's two percent. Okay. So 
I don't know why it's not working because it 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 went to one and then it went to zero. Okay. Now it's not active. Maybe. Load it because sometimes restarting can can work. The, can make the things work. Let's wait. But meanwhile, I can show you the code base uh, because we are thinking to make it open source. Okay, so let me show you the code base for that. It's around, I think, 30,000, 40,000 lines of code. Okay. Uh, I think I can't uh, show this, but yeah, I will. I will try to give a demo after this session ends. Okay, we will have a separate call or oh, separate meeting or talk. Uh, yeah, anything, anyone, the doubts. Yeah. I have a few questions. Like uh, uh, you mentioned about the Intuit's project, this uh, related to AI ops, right? The Numa logic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So can you be specific on that? Like how it is used? Where? where okay, Numa logic. We are not even trying. But I was telling about the AI ops tools that are coming into existence. Uh, so what Intuit did was they they had their own ML models. So they built a tool out of it, which would give you the rating. Okay. So it was basically for their threat detection because uh, they are some kind of exposing the things to the end user. So they were giving the ratings to the the occurrences based on the time frame or the or the uh, inputs that they received. Okay. So based uh, the data was sent to the ML model. It will it will give them the rating and then uh, some kind of failure or uh, forecasting was done. And you mentioned about something about the Helm chart uh, versioning duplication, right? Yeah. Uh, so, what is the comparison against, like, to which two uh, versions that you compare, and then how do you say that it is duplicated? Uh, uh, the Nova one? No, one of the slides I've seen actually. I didn't forget. No, I was talking about Nova only. No, the Helm chart duplications. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, so Nova already has a, a list of the deprecated uh, versions. Okay, so uh, it so what is the what is their source of information like? So their source of uh, uh, information is based on the releases. They will update their databases and okay. things will happen. Okay, so they go into the artifact hub and then yeah, what it is. but I think we can customize uh, this thing like after twenty eight point one zero, it should mark as uh, deprecated. Okay. So I think we can customize it, but I'm not sure yet. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any doubts? Uh, what are the interesting metrics that we can uh, okay, track for, with yeah, C CDM? Okay. okay. Sorry. Uh, for the metrics, right? Uh, I, I told that I will be telling about metrics. You are talking that thing. Sorry. You are talking about the metrics, right? Yeah, for Cilium, Be like because it's uh, you can get information from the kernel level, right? So okay. You are talking right. about which metrics to choose for HP and VPA. No, I mean with Cilium, it's more about like you can track information about power consumption and things like that, right? You are talking about Kepler. Not getting it. Um, You're talking about which metrics to choose or what? 
what can be tracked actually what are the metrics we can what information we can get from uh, cilium or from cilium cilium hmm. okay so cilium is a service mesh okay so you can for metrics it's uh, so first of all uh, let's talk about metrics so metrics is time series okay time series entries so uh, how do we define which metric is right for us right this is your question so what we do is first of all we implement vpa okay so vpa and hp works uh, together so what we apply is vpa it will analyze your uh, analyze your particular uh, application for some days okay it will analyze the inputs outputs and it will suggest you the uh, metrics that should be there for upscaling and downscaling okay vpa will suggest you based on that recommendation what you have to do you have to apply those metrics in hpa and talking about the power consumption and uh, things like that uh, yeah you can count the number of calls made to the file system okay uh, or uh, maybe like uh, maybe some uh, you can use gold goldilocks if you if you know so goldilocks in a, is another tool just like nova okay so you can use goldilocks for that uh, yeah okay Hi. Um, even though it's not related to your presentation, so I have a separate question. So I was wondering what type of tools do you have, like do you use uh, for provisioning a, bare, a cluster from bare metal VMs, right? Okay. Is there any kind of UI tools available that you know of or you prefer? Okay, for bare metals, right? Uh, I don't have any experience with bare metal, but uh, for cloud, we are just using Kubernetes scripts. We have automation scripts. We have our own platform. Uh, I uh, I can ex show you after this uh, session. Okay, so we have one click. So when we click it, click on it, it will automatically create the cluster. That's it. No, it is like automated scripts only. Okay. Uh, you want? Okay. You were saying something? Uh, you can try weak cluster. Weak. Weak cluster. Okay. Okay. Uh, I I heard of some. I tried a Rancher, and then the okay. there are some tools, but I was just wondering. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, V clusters is for is the virtual clusters, right? So virtual clusters, uh, it's like cluster in a cluster. Uh, okay. So yeah, Rancher will do the similar type of thing, like cluster on top of cluster. Uh, yeah, mainly Rancher comes from the management space, actually. Now there is a new project from CNCF called uh, vCluster. You can, you can create virtual clusters, clusters on top of clusters, and you can make it like dynamically created. Okay, thank you.